Thank you, Mark and Dan. Good morning, good people, and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Taos. We hope that you feel welcome here in this virtual space where we get together, whether you're, if you're joining us by Zoom, if you're joining us by Facebook, or if you're joining us on the phone or uh, catching up later on YouTube. Uh, we're glad you're here in whatever way you are and glad to share this time with you. Uh, today, if, if you are a YouTube user uh, or Facebook user, you've noticed that while I've been on vacation, the uh, sites have not been updated. That'll change tomorrow if you want to catch up on last week's worship or uh, miss Christmas Eve and want to virtually celebrate that with us. Um, I also want to let y'all know it is okay. So it's a lie. It's not quite epiphany. That will be this Wednesday but we are celebrating Epiphany today. Uh, and we are also celebrating communion. So if you can grab some food, something to eat, something to drink, uh, bread and juice are one option, but there are so many others. If you've got Christmas goodies left over, this is a great way to eat them guilt-free, calorie-free. Uh, get that so we can celebrate the sacrament together later. Are there any other announcements from the body this morning. I see Joan. Yeah, the first of the year and we're back to our regular schedule with the men's uh, shelter for dinners. So on January 28th, I'll be looking for people to help provide the main course, starch, veggies, salad, beverages and bread and the breakfast items. So let me know if you can help out with any of that. Wonderful, thank you, Joan. Any other announcements? I see Mark. I think we have a worship committee on Wednesday at noon. We do, worship team Wednesday at noon via Zoom. If you're interested in joining and have not been on the worship team before, feel free to send me, to get in touch with Mark or myself and we'll get you the information. Anything you, else this morning? Do you know uh, when shared table people are gonna come back and be here? I, we've got a, about eight, wonderful coats that somebody left here about a two weeks ago and there's some food here in the uh in the sanctuary that's been left so um i'd like to get it out to them Great. we'll uh we'll get those joan and i will coordinate uh most shared table stuff i've just been dropping off at uh the methodist church but we'll get we'll coordinate that outside of worship that's good news to hear um I'm gonna, of course, make the announcement that we still, if there's any pledge cards that haven't yet trickled in, we're always glad to receive them. I have not, I've been out of the office this week on vacation, so I have not checked the church mail. So it's possible that everybody has turned them in and I'm just wrong. But just in case, a, a gentle reminder and then huge thank you to those who have, so we can set our budget and keep moving forward. Any other announcements? All right, then without further ado, I'll turn it over to Joan to lead us in the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. A star has risen in the east, star of wonder, star of night. A child is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing. Let us follow the star to Bethlehem and bring our gifts to the newborn Christ. Our opening hymn is We Three Kings of Orient Are. In the purple hymnal, that would be number 151, and in the blue hymnal, number 66. We three kings of Orient Are, bearing gifts we traverse so far, Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceed. 
leading guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever sees he never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, Incense owns a deity nigh, prayer and praising, gladly raising, worshiping God most high. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume, breathes a life of gathering gloom. God in sign, bleeding, dying, sealed in a stone-cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, sound through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, Star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Please join me in the call to confession. Trusting in God's gracious mercy, let us confess our sin together. God of wonder, God of night, you are holy light in dark places. You are holy darkness when all is too bright. Forgive us, O oh God, when we turn away from your light, when we follow our own ambitions instead of your call, when we respond to your presence with fear rather than joy. Forgive us, O oh God, when we do not comprehend the depth of your Christmas love, the meaning of your powerful story, or the call you place on each of our lives. Forgive us, O God, and by your forgiveness, empower us to follow the star once more. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. There is so much that we hold on to, but God has washed us clean. There is so much that we dread and fear, but the angels come and they say, do not fear. For behold, I bring you tidings of comfort and joy. So friends, whatever you bring with you to this virtual space this morning, know this, you are God's beloved and you are forgiven. Whatever you've done, whatever regrets or shame you hold on to from the past, you can set that down, ease your burden, walk away. You have been already forgiven. And wherever you go on this journey of life, whatever 2021 has in store for us, we go with God the God who is word made flesh and come among us. And therefore we always will be forgiven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. He came down that we may have light. He came down that we may have light. He came down that we may have light.
Pray with me, please. Holy One, giver of all light, lift up our hearts and minds to Christ, the morning star that never fades. By the light of your Holy Spirit, reveal to us your saving word and lead us to offer our lives to you in service and in love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you and the wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. The second reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. With joy and gladness, hymns and psalms of gratitude, with a voice of praise discover that to worship God is good. God unites the scattered people, gathers those who wandered far, heals the hurt and broken. 
and spirits tending every wound and scar. Such is God's great power and wisdom, none can calculate or tell. Keen is God to ground the wicked and with humble folk to dwell. Sing to God with joy and gladness, hymns and psalms of gratitude. With the voice of praise discover that to worship God is good. God with clouds the sky has curtained, thus ensuring rain shall fall. Earth responding grows to order, born more creatures great and small. God's discernment never favors, strength or speed to lift or move. God delights in those who worship, trusting in God's steadfast love. Sing to God with joy and gladness, hymns and songs of gratitude. With a voice of praise discover that to worship God is good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. As always, we will put that on the Facebook and YouTube sites as well, as well as the virtual choir um, that was a hit. And uh, we'll make sure that is available to y'all as well. Our lesson from the gospel continues this morning from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Hear what God's spirit is saying to God's church. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men, learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me words so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning is our final humming a sermon. And this time we will sing the hymn through the sermon, but not again at the end. We've got a big five verse hymn and communion and 
we're going to let y'all sing it once. So please feel free to sing along with Mark and myself as we sing the different verses. But before we do that, let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels standing near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Today we celebrate Epiphany, the twelfth day of Christmas, almost the feast day of the three kings, a celebration of the light, the light of the star of Bethlehem that guided the Magi from the east, the light of the sun that rises over the mountains here in Taos every morning, the light we see in the smile of a friend or a neighbor, the light that is returning a little bit more day by day as the days get longer, the light that shines and the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Epiphany concludes the Christmas season for us liturgically. And so it also concludes our time of humming a sermon on Christmas carols. We end with a classic. It came upon the midnight clear. Growing up, for me, it wasn't really Christmas until I'd heard a recording of Bing Crosby and or Frank Sinatra singing this Christmas carol. But as always, the story goes back further than the version of the song that we today tend to know. Still for the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats for all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains they bend on hovering wing, and you're ever at a trivia night and they ask what hymn or Christmas carol uses the word cloven, now you know. Composed in 1849, many have claimed that this song, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, is the first uniquely American Christmas carol, the first to come out of the United States. Within the next two decades, several other American classics would emerge, Jingle Bells, We Three Kings, A Little Town of Bethlehem, if you remember from earlier in Advent, and I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. But first came this text, composed by a Unitarian minister, Edmund H. Sears, in 1849 and set to music by Richard Storrs Willis a year later. Reverend Sears was a minister in Wayland, Massachusetts, a fervent pacifist and an even more fervent abolitionist. 
Historians say that Sears wrote this hymn as a reflection on the aftermath of the Mexican-American War and the lead up to what would become the American Civil War. We can hear the backdrop of national turmoil in this hymn, particularly when we listen to the way that Sears describes the earth. The heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. It goes above the sad and lonely plains, the babble sounds of earth. Sears addresses listeners in the fourth verse, my favorite verse, and ye beneath life's crushing load, etc., etc. In fact, Sears' repeated use of the word weary, weary, speaks volumes both to the state of the world in which he lived as well as his own emotional state while wading through that weary world. Perhaps that makes it an appropriate carol for us to who among us these days is not weary, whether it's personal circumstances or political ones, whether it's our present reality of or fear of what may be coming in the future, we can identify with Reverend Sears, can't we? Different circumstances, same troubles. We too, buried beneath the woes of sin and strife, cannot or do not hear the love song of the angels. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the heavenly hymn have rolled two thousand years of wrong. And may at morn earth hear not the tidings that they bring. Oh, hush the noise and cease the strife to hear the angels sing. Some Christians who quite frankly need something better to do with their time have argued that it came upon a midnight clear should not be included among Christmas hymns or in hymnals at all. They take issue with the fact that this carol does not tell the story of Jesus's birth like away in a manger or a little town of Bethlehem. In fact, if you look carefully, it doesn't technically mention the name of Jesus at all. No, this Christmas song is all about the angels. That's actually what I love about it. It's a carol that points us to the song of the angels. And what is it that the angels always, always say when they appear in the Bible? Fear not. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Fear not, shepherds, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people. Do not be afraid. That is the song that the angels sing. If you have a copy of the purple hymnal, Glory to God, you'll see what it says in the notes at the bottom. If not, don't worry, I'll read it to you. The little blurb that goes with this hymn says, the it of the first line of this text by a Unitarian minister 
does not refer to the birth of Jesus, but to that glorious song of old, the angelic tidings of peace on earth. The it is ambiguous. The it is the song of the angels. It came upon the midnight clear means that we're talking about, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Glory to God in the highest and peace to all people on earth. And you beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bound in love, who along the climbing way with painful steps and slow, look now for glad and It came upon, whoops, dropping the hymnal. It came upon a midnight clear. The it remains for us today, open-ended, ambiguous. Is it the birth of Christ? Is it the song of the angels? Is it peace on earth and goodwill to all? Is it the message, do not be afraid? Well, Yes, yes to all of those and more. What is it for you this year? The thing that comes, the joy, is it the hope of a new year? Is it reconciliation within your family? Is it a new course of treatment for a daunting diagnosis? Is it the light slowly coming back as the days get longer? Is it hope for a shift in our nation, our national rhetoric for perhaps a lessening of the political turmoil and deadlock? Is it a new job or a new direction your life might be taking? Is it perhaps a long awaited vaccine finally beginning to make its way into our community here in Taos? Over the last several weeks, my Facebook newsfeed has been blowing up with friends who work in hospitals and other medical professions, posting pictures of themselves receiving the first dose of the COVID vaccine. It's an exciting, incredible, historic thing to see. I've never seen so many pictures of shots. We used to be kind of scared of those. One post in particular has stayed with me. A friend receiving her vaccine and written next to it a line from another beloved Christmas song, Oh Holy Night a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. That says it all, doesn't it? The weary world rejoices because hope is on its way. The weary world rejoices because in spite of all that has happened to us, the light is still shining. The weary world rejoices because the angels are still singing. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you tidings of comfort and joy to all people. Glory to God in the highest 
and peace on earth. So whatever it is for you this year, friends, take heart. Look now for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. Come, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old. When with the air encircling year shall come the time foretold. When peace shall over all the earth his ancient splendors fling. The whole world gives back the song which now the angels sing. Friends, indeed, peace comes to us in the middle of the night, and the good news, the song of the angels, do not be afraid. So let us share that love and that peace with one another. I invite you to put your screen on gallery view and look around at these faces and unmute yourselves. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ and also be with, you. with you. Yeah, peace dear. Peace be with you all to everyone. Peace be with you. With all of you. Peace with everyone, please. From Facebook, we have greetings from Carol White, Boyd Earl, Jim and Sandy Irby, Joanne Ortiz. Peace to all of you. I invite you, as we've been doing in recent weeks, knowing that winter can be a lonely and long time to look around at this screen, our Zoom screen uh, has been overflowing to two screens a couple times, so feel free to click the arrows if you need to. Look at this screen and see either someone that you haven't spoken with in a while, someone you want to say, say hello to, or someone that's not here that you want to reach out to this week. Write that name down and give them a call at some point to share the peace of Christ. And now having shared Christ's peace, we come to our time of prayer. There will as usual be a time to lift up prayers in the comment section, uh, lift up prayers aloud. If you're on Facebook, feel free to post those in the comment section now so that we won't lose them in the delay. If you're on Zoom, you can name them aloud or post them in the chat. If you're on YouTube, know that your prayers are heard anytime they are prayed. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, Jesus Christ, light of the world, we come to you this morning basking in your light and receiving with open arms your tidings of comfort and joy. God, we thank you for the world, for creation that you have called good. We ask for your help and your guidance as we seek to tread lightly and faithfully upon it. We pray for your church, church all around the world and gathering together in new and creative ways during this time of global pandemic. We pray for the leaders of all nations and especially of our own nation as we come to a time of transition in leadership. God, may peace, compassion, and justice be served during this time. May violence not erupt. 
be present with us. We pray for those in our community, especially for those workers on the front lines who are tending to those who are sick. We pray for the blessing of science and medicine and vaccines and hope for a world that will slowly change back into the world, something like the world that we remember. God, we pray for our loved ones for those that we name aloud and those that we name in silently as we come to you now, praying for the most vulnerable. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray this morning? Yes, Joan. For Marnie and for Francis and our friend Ginny and all those others who are um, battling cancer. God, in your mercy, you are our prayer. Our prayers. I see Amy Jo. Yeah, um, so I have an additional one to add. My good friend Paula confirmed that her rectal cancer has spread and is malignant and aggressive, and it's in both of her lungs. Mm -hmm. And all that's left now is to pray for a miracle. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For whom and what else do we pray? For the people of the Acoma Pueblo who have lost their hospital in the midst of a pandemic. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. From Facebook, Joanna Ortiz says, prayers for the vaccine coming to us soon. And for those who are at high risk that they be protected by this gift. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for our son, Ellen. prayers for our son and his wife who have a very hard decision coming up either this month or next month. May they make the right decision. And their family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Deidre. I think we need you to unmute. Am I muted? You're good. Thanks. Well, and to continue praying for my father. He's physically doing well, but his wife is deteriorating in her mental health and has been. And her son just died in the funerals today. He died of alcoholism and she's possibly at a point of not returning back. And so my father's pretty much lost his his wife after surviving everything he did this summer. And he's I don't see my dad down very much. He's down. <laughs> so prayers for Annette and my dad, please. <laughs> God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Julia, I see Julia. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I would like continued prayers from my dear friend John Paul, who is in a very uh, difficult situation. Uh, he's a man of strong faith, and I know he'll pull through, but he's got to digest what's happened to him and, and get free of it. So I would add to that prayer all those whom we know and don't know who are still struggling with old wrongs and cannot release them. Amen. God, in your mercy. In our prayers. I'd like to say prayers for Amy Jo and give her strength in this hard time. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Our prayers. Uh, prayers of uh, safe and healthy and timely recovery for 
uh, my mother-in-law and her husband who are um, sick with COVID right now. Yes. God, in your mercy. In our prayers. In our prayers. Georgia. Thanksgiving for, uh, I just got a word, Thanksgiving for uh, an improvement in my sister. God, in your love. God, in your love and mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. We lift up all these words to you, O oh God. Words spoken and unspoken, trusting that you hear us and that you shine light even when it feels dark. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Friends, now is the time when we would usually, or when we take up an offering. And so I invite you to think of a way that you can be of service. A good easy one is always to give online or write your check to the church so we can keep our mission and ministry going. Um, but there are so many ways to be of service in our community and to serve God by serving one another. So as we write checks or pray or ponder, I invite us to sing a doxology together. with me please lord please guide us in the use of these gifts and our energies allowing your light to shine through us in the darkest places in the name of your son jesus christ amen amen friends i invite you now if you haven't already to get something to drink and something to eat as we celebrate the lord's supper together once again Friends, this is the table of God. They shall come from north and south and east and west and sit at table with the risen Christ. This is the hope, the promise of Epiphany, that we will feast one day in glory and before then that we will feast together again. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, the light of the world. With saints and angels, we join the song, the ancient and eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, holy God, for Jesus Christ the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. With this bread and this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. And we look forward with hope to his coming. As we pray, come Lord Jesus, for great is the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take on flesh in us. Awaken your people and fill us with your light, bringing the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever, Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he died, our Lord Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Así también después de la cena, tomó la copa y les dijo, esta copa es el nuevo pacto, confirmado en mi sangre. Cada vez que beban, háganlo en memoria de mí. De esta manera proclamamos la muerte del Señor hasta que él vuelva. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us celebrate together. I invite you to put your screen on gallery view so you can see those partaking with you what food and drink we have and the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, from east and west and north and south, you have gathered us at your table, called us your beloved, and fed us from your body. Transform us to be your body in the world and fortify us by your spirit so that we may serve you and our neighbors with great joy. Amen. Now in closing, we come to sing our final hymn. It's maybe a new one to many of us. In the purple hymnal, it's number 800. If you work from the blue one, it uh, was sent out with the email, or you can just Google sometimes a light surprises. Let us sing praise to God. Sometimes a light surprises the child of God who sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. When comforts are declining, he grants the soul again. cheer it after rain. In holy contemplation, we sweetly then pursue the theme of God's salvation and find it ever new. Set free 
from present sorrows we cheerfully can say let the unknown tomorrow bring with it what it may it can bring with it Amen. Friends, go forth into this new day, this new year, into light that shines on a weary world, trusting that that light of Christ shines also within you, and that you too can be the bearer of light, can be like the angels, those who sing, do not fear. For I bring you good news for all people. Friends, go forth to love and serve the Lord. And as you go, may joy and nothing less find you on the way. May you be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified, risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen.